Um, I'm so excited to be with you today uh, to provide an update on what we've been building recently and how the next six to 12 months looks like in terms of innovation. Um, I'd like to start with an update on our platform. Um, the Coveo platform is really a composable AI search and generative experience platform that supports now semantic search, AI recommendations, generative answering, which is critically important, and we'll dig a little bit deeper uh, on that in uh, the second part of the presentation, and of course, unified personalization. We power multiple use cases, as most of you know, across websites, commerce, service, and workplace, so that's our engagement and app layer. And we leverage content from a wide variety of data sources and content sources with our native connectors, with our uh, custom connector frameworks, and also we leverage behavioral data from, this connect from various data sources too, and we capture a lot uh, on our own. So we have this connector layer, and we also have this unified index that now does both keyword search and semantic search with the ability of keeping vectors or embeddings directly within the index. Uh, we have multiple AI models uh, around machine learning, deep learning, and now the ability to deal with generative AI and large language models. And we have a whole set of API frameworks and native integrations to allow us to integrate with those various use cases at the top. So we have analytics finally and a whole set of admin tools. If we get into the details, uh, you will see that those in the middle, those different AI models around machine learning, deep learning, and Gen AI. And I want to highlight also those native integrations around Salesforce, around SAP, around Sitecore, uh, around Adobe, Zendesk that we maintain to make those um, Coveo integrations more natively integrated. We have use cases extensions like merchandising in the context of commerce also, and then a whole sets of ways to build dashboards and administer the platform. So this is our broad platform and our large customers will leverage multiple use cases from those platform, multiple components of those platforms. Um, but this platform is built on the same core principles um, as always. We position ourselves as the intelligence behind. While we can build and use our experiences most of the time, we are behind the experience from an API perspective or native integration perspective. We aim at high scale projects uh, with a focus on behavioral data so we can build specialized AI. And we do all of this with the utmost respect for privacy and security. So I'd like to, uh, I'd like to now move on the generative AI side and uh, provide an update on what we already announced uh, earlier this summer about our Gen AI initiatives. So, most of the large organizations and customers um, out there have either are using Coveo or have a form of advanced enterprise search capability inside their organization. So this is Coveo here on the left side that you see where there's all of this connectivity layer that allows the platform to reach all of the areas of the organization where there's high value content. So we have an index and we have advanced uh, AI relevance to power great results search box. And with, of course, different UI frameworks, administration, and analytics. What we've seen since the beginning of the year is some areas of those organizations have been experimenting starting those projects, those question answering projects, that would involve a separate vector database 
to power semantic searches and then to ground a prompt and ask a large language model to provide an answer. While this may work in niche application, this brings multiple uh, issues for the enterprise. Uh, the first one is that by doing this, you have different search boxes to go after the same content, basically. Um, so on the left side, that's the search box that people are used to, know, and are familiar with. And on the right side, this is a question answering system that doesn't have the ability to reach all of the content, all of the, the information of the organization, and that quite frankly has little to no administration, no dashboarding, no analytics, um, limited security, and so on. So big deal at the end of the day is those two different search boxes for the same question will provide different results. So that's bad because they're dealing with different set of facts. So what we have done is consolidate those two systems into a single one. So now with Coveo, we've got integrated search and question answering. The left side of this, uh, of this slide is still the traditional advanced AI powered search, but then we've added vectors, as you can see in the middle, within the index, so we can do semantic search and basically deal with complex questions. The most relevant excerpts or passages from the result set from the semantic search will then be used to ground a prompt to a large language model. Currently, we're using uh, GPT 3.5 on our Azure infrastructure, and this allows us to keep the data of our customers within the Coveo cloud. So the advantages are obvious from a backend perspective. So we have depth, breadth, and freshness of content. There's security and governance that comes with the Coveo platform, administration analytics, and it's optimized for scale and cost. On the front end, there's um, an obvious advantage at having one unified search box for all the queries, questions, and we think it's now an intent box. There's their generated answers on the most relevant paragraphs only if we believe that a generated answer is bringing value. So there's personalization and contextualization that comes with the Coveo system. And then we have, uh, we have all of the capability to link to the source of truth. So there's truth, it's truthful, current, and verifiable lineage. Um, so all of this uh, provides basically maximum protection against hallucination. In the context of large language model, that's key, especially in the enterprise. So at this time, what I would do is uh, show you the system in action with, um, with real demos. So I will start with uh, customer zero. Customer zero is, uh, is Coveo. It's uh, our own partner uh, community that includes technical documentation, how-tos, and basically calendar of events, basically everything that is useful and uh, informative for our own partners. It starts with a search box here. Um, so I will, uh, I will search things like if I search for service cloud, you can see that I have query suggests here. It is based on AI that is predictive um, and provides, uh, provides query completion. If I search for it, I have results here that are ranked by relevance uh, and I have facets allowing me to slice and dice the content, okay? So this is the advanced AI search and recommendation uh, paradigm. But let's say I want to um, ask a question. How does Coveo determine relevance, for instance? 
So again, I have the results at here that came uh, very quickly, but out of those results, we at the semantic search will surface the most important passages or excerpts that are then used to ground a call to a large language, a prompt to the large language model, which then provides an answer. And the answer here is great. It's specific to Coveo. It's built based on those results at the bottom. Let's get a step further. Let's type how does Coveo leverage permissions? That's an interesting question because I know uh, that we leverage permissions differently depending on the environment and depending on the product. So that's a great answer. That's a detailed answer. Um, but then maybe uh, I want to be more specific and I want to click and understand how does Covo leverage permission in the context of Salesforce. And there you go. The answer is contextualized in real time with Salesforce, about Salesforce. So the answer is about Salesforce here. So that's quite powerful. Obviously, there are multiple attributes that can be carried within a user profile, and those filters uh, can, be, uh, can be set at, uh, at login. Uh, we are leveraging a generic large language model. The only thing that we do here is creating a prompt on the fly based on the context, what I see, what is used in terms of relevance, and what is, uh, what is filtered. There are, multiple, there are multiple ways to look at the source of truth. Uh, here we've got the citations here. So these are the key documents that are used to, uh, for determining the answer. And that's part of, this, part of this document that the system extracts the most important passages that are then fed again to the large language model. Let's try another one here. Let's get a step further and let's compare feature by feature uh, two modules of Coveo. So the sitemap and the web connectors are used by our partners to index web content. Which one, which one should they use and when? So if I compare feature by feature, the sitemap and web connector, basically I see through prerequisites, content coverage, indexing speed, the differences between those two different connectors, which is quite powerful and, uh, and interesting here. Uh, I can get into uh, more answer styling, explain in detail something uh, that, is, uh, that is quite advanced, comparing two different UI frameworks, the Coveo Headless and the Tomic, and when to use it. So you see that it can go, uh, it can go pretty much in detail here. And then this one is cool. So for you in the audience where maybe English is not your first language, what about querying in another language against English content and getting an answer in your own language? So this one here is in French. Comment fonctionne une query pipeline? Basically it is, how does query pipeline work? Okay, so if I search for this, so what it does is it sends, it sends to, uh, to the large language model the best excerpts from those results here at the bottom that are in English, by the way, and then the answer is returned and translated automatically in French. And um, while this is, a, uh, this is a more of a, I think, a niche use case at this point, it proves the power of the model and the system and where this can go in the future with instant translation from both on the query and the result side. And finally, um, I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to do this last one, which is, uh, which is the best one as far as I'm concerned. How to create a partner organization. Oh. I don't have a result here. I don't have an answer, sorry. 
Why is that? Oh, because I'm not logged in, and this content is not available for anonymous or public audiences. So let's log in. And let's log in as art on our partner community. And let's do the same query here. And there you go. I've got great result, a great result here because I'm logged in. So that's a great way to enrich the search experience on our partner community, leveraging all of the information that's already been indexed, the security and permissions that are already in place, the wide and broad variety of content is in there, and the contextual nature of search. So we're leveraging search and facets to slice and dice content, to reorder content, and filter content, and then that's what we leverage to create a great answer. Now, I, I would also like to show uh, a real customer that has recently gone live on their support portal. That's Xero. So Xero serves 3.7 million subscribers, so small and medium businesses around the world. And it's all about providing predictive support uh, directly, from their, directly from their support portal. Um, so, Coveo has been part of the Xero experience for a long time, but recently they added generative answering directly on the portal. So, I want to show you a few examples of how it looks like. So, if I start with a complex query like how does multi-factor authentication work with Xero, We see that the answer is pretty detailed, and again, it comes from the multiple results that are at the bottom here that are provided by that are leveraged by search or provided by search. Um, let's say, how do I update my subscription payment details? Those are real queries that users typically have with Xero. So there you go, you've got the answer right away. And maybe a last one. How do, I add, how do I add a credit to an invoice? There you go. Detailed, precise, relevant answer. No need to go through multiple documents and come up with uh, your own answer. So that's live. Um, Xero is doing a great job on their support portal and we're quite excited of, uh, of this implementation. So, going back to the presentation, I'd like to give a glimpse of our future capabilities and provide a little bit of uh, outlook of what we think is important as next step. So, answer styling is something that uh, will appear very soon. So, the ability to ask for um, broader answers, step-by-step, -step, bullets, and so on. This is, uh, this is coming very soon. Inline citations is, is something that we will provide too, with citations details, of course. Uh, conversational search is super strategic for us. So the search box for us is a universal way for users to interact with information. So we want to make this conversational. With the answer provided by the uh, generative answering, we are going to have a follow-up uh, box here directly within the answer so the user can have a dialogue or a conversation with the system. And then we will also provide suggestions about what to ask, how to ask, and so on. So this is, uh, this is coming in early 24. And finally, in the context of commerce, um, we are experimenting with what we call guided discovery, where um, some, some of our large customers have a lot of rich content about uh, buying guides, how to, and um, those 
types of this type of knowledge that typically enriches um, the commerce experience. So this is an experiment that uh, we are doing, and we're expecting if there's if it creates the value we think. We're expecting that this will become uh, this will become a product in the future. So the example here for home improvement store, um, the example here I'm typing is tips to build outside kitchen with a barbecue. So the generative answering will look at all of these buying guides and how to uh, documents and surface an answer that is. Um, pretty darn good. So it provides various, uh, various tips and various steps that need to be considered, but also uh, we're going to provide links to products directly in there. So it's really a way to connect the generative answering with a product catalog in the context of commerce. Basically, it's a new way to shop and it's a new way to buy. And then uh, we will have top categories that are linked to that answer. And we will have the ability to navigate slice and dice and get more into a classic commerce experience where you want to navigate, shop, uh, discover uh, by yourself products. So connecting those two experiences has for us a uh, huge value and uh, we expect this to move forward in the coming months. So as a summary in closing, uh, I'd like to also say that all of those generative AI experiences need to consider uh, cost. Uh, large language model and semantic search are expensive technologies in terms of computing, so cost matters. Uh, trust is not an option, so all of the data all of the content from a, uh, from a large organization cannot go outside to an external <clears throat> large language model system. There will be domain adaptation and open source domain adaptation means that there will be fine tuning, we believe, of those large language models in certain verticals, certain industries, or even certain organizations. But therefore, Coveo will be large language model agnostic. Today, we're using uh, a Azure hosted OpenAI GPT 3.5, but down the road, we expect to be able to connect with multiple alternatives. And finally, in the end, uh, we believe that any systems will require relevance across all content and all interactions. Therefore, that's why we built this platform.